In this topic, I'm going to look at genetic screening and counselling. So we're going to look at what is genetic screening and what are the steps in genetic screening. Genetic screening and cancer. Types of genetic screening. And then finally, I'm going to end off with a few questions to consider with regards to this topic. Genetic techniques can determine before birth whether the child might be affected by a genetic disorder. The process by which this is done is called genetic screening. Many genetic disorders such as cystic fibrosis are the result of gene mutations. And gene mutations may arise if one or more nucleotides in DNA are either deleted or substituted by other nucleotides. If the mutation results in a dominant allele, all individuals will have the genetic disorder. If the allele is recessive, it will only appear in those individuals that have two recessive alleles. So we say that they are homozygous recessive. Individuals who are heterozygous will not display symptoms of the disease, but they will carry one copy of the mutant allele. So they've got the capacity to pass on the disease to their offspring if the other parent is also heterozygous or homozygous recessive. It's important to screen who may carry a mutant allele. These individuals will often have a family history of the disease. And screening can determine the probabilities of a couple having offspring with a genetic disorder. So using family history and the results of screening tests, potential parents can obtain advice from a genetic counsellor about the implications if they do choose to have children. For example, if you have a look at this couple here. They are both carriers, for example, carriers for cystic fibrosis. What is the probability that they're going to have a child who will have cystic fibrosis? It's going to be a one in four chance. Right, let's have a look at a summary of genetic screening. First off, the order of nucleotides on the mutated gene is determined by DNA sequencing, which we looked at in the last topic. Nowadays, you've got genetic libraries which store the DNA sequences of many of the genes responsible for common genetic diseases. A fragment of that DNA that is complementary basis to the mutated portion of the DNA is produced. The fragments are labeled radioactively to form a DNA probe. Then you have multiple copies of the radioactively labeled DNA probes being made and you use the PCR technique, which is polymerase chain reaction. The probe is then added to a single strand DNA fragment from the individual being tested. If the donor has got the mutated gene, some of the donor's fragments will have a nucleotide sequence that's complementary to the probe. So the probe is going to bind to these complementary bases. If the complementary fragments are present, the DNA probe will be taken up. So it's going to bind to that donor DNA. And when you put this over x-ray, the x-ray film will be exposed, as you can see in this diagram here. Now, if no complementary fragments are present, the probe will not be taken up, and the x-ray film will be left unexposed. Now, it's possible to fix hundreds of DNA probes in an array on the glass slide. So by adding a sample of the DNA to that array, any complementary DNA sequences in the donor DNA will bind to one or more probes. So in this way, it's possible to test simultaneously for many different genetic disorders. Now, another area where genetic screening can be valuable is in detecting oncogenes that are responsible for cancer. Cancer may develop by tumor suppressor genes mutating so that they cease to inhibit cell division. It requires both alleles, as you can see in the bottom diagram there, to mutate, to inactivate tumor suppressor genes, and to initiate the development of a tumor. 
Now, some people inherit one mutated tumor suppressor gene. So these individuals are at a greater risk of developing cancer. Now, if a mutated gene is detected by genetic screening, individuals are at a greater risk of cancer, so they can make informed decisions about their lifestyle and treatment. They can choose to give up smoking, lose weight, eat more healthily, and avoid mutagens as far as possible. They can also go for regular checks that will lead to early diagnosis. So you've got different types of genetic screening. There's carrier screening and prenatal screening. So carrier screening involves families, individuals, potential parents. Prenatal screening checks for chromosome abnormalities such as Down syndrome, genetic disorders such as hemophilia, and it can also check for neural defects, for example, spina bifida. So the way that it's done is either by chorionic villus sampling, which is done on the early placental tissue at about 10 to 12 weeks. And then you've got amniocentesis, which is done using the cells in the amniotic fluid. And this is done at about 13 to 18 weeks. Intrauterine blood tests can be done about 18 weeks. And then once the baby is born, you can also screen the child for diseases like phenylketonuria, PKU. Genetic counseling is rather like genetic social work. It entails the giving of advice and information to others to make personal decisions about themselves or their offspring. An important aspect of genetic counseling is to research the family history of the inherited disease and to advise parents on the likelihood of it arising in their children. So the counselor explains the results, probabilities, diagnosis and treatments. Now before I end off, here are some questions to consider when looking at genetic screening. Who should be screened? What conditions should be screened for? Who should pay? Do we screen if there's no cure? What are the psychological effects of being screened? And should these results be kept confidential? And that concludes our lesson. The end.